Welcome back! We finally met Doc's 17-year-old younger self, but unfortunately he's not being very forthcoming about his scientific aspirations. Looks like we may have to prove ourselves to him. And we got a recording of him mumbling about some sort of scientific problem that he's trying to solve, and maybe older Doc might be able to help us make some sense out of that. Psst, Doc! Marty! Have you found my younger self yet? Yeah, we definitely did. So, Doc, does this ring a bell? Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I Good know. grief! Is that me? I sound so... Young? I was gonna say intense. Yeah. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals a Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional membrane. <laughs> so... It'll be fine. In other words, a video game. Where have you been all this time? I missed you. I've missed you too, Marty. But I thought it was important to let you live your own life for a while, free from the insanity of time travel. I gotta admit, it was nice to not have my family history blowing up in my face for a few months. Yeah. Besides, I've been busy raising my own unpredictable teenagers. Yeah, how's that been going? So how are Clara and the kids? They're fine, fine. Right now we're trying to decide where to send Jules and Vern to college. Clara prefers the 2020s, but I'm partial to the 1960s. We're planning on visiting you and Jennifer in 2011 soon. Me and Jennifer? In 2011? Oh, forget I said anything. Well, 2011 was when this game came out, so that makes sense. Also, Clara wants the kids to go to college in 2020? It kind of seems odd considering that she grew up in the 19th century, but I guess she and Doc may have time-traveled quite a bit in the months between the Part 3 and now. But where did the DeLorean come from? That is the question I've been wondering about. Where'd the DeLorean come from? The last time I saw it, it had been smashed to pieces by a train. It's a fantastic story. Do you remember when the DeLorean got struck by lightning in 1955? Yeah. Yeah? Unbeknownst to either of us, the lightning produced a temporal duplicate of the time machine, one that was tossed 70 years into the future. What? I found out about it during a trip to 2025, and recovered it just in time to stop Griff Tannen from vandalizing the time stream. Heavy. So that DeLorean... ...is for all intents and purposes the exact same machine as the original. Plus or minus little bells and whistles I've added over the years, of course. Well, I guess that's an explanation, but I don't know. It just kind of feels like the Back to the Future version of A Wizard did it. What were you doing in 1931 anyway? Oh, nothing terribly exciting. Indulging in a little personal nostalgia, picking up a few rare out-of-print books to surprise Clara on her birthday, solving a historical mystery or two. The usual. The usual? You lead a pretty unusual life, Doc. Yeah. It's an unusual universe, Marty. That may be true, but uh, I kind of get the impression that he's not telling us everything. How'd you wind up in jail in 1931 anyway? During my trip to the past, I decided to look into one of Hill Valley's unsolved mysteries. The fire at the speakeasy. Exactly. I thought I was safely hidden across the street. But when the fire started, there was a tremendous explosion, and I was knocked unconscious by a stray brick. When I woke up, I was here in jail, charged with arson. That's horrible. I know. Worse yet, I still don't know who started the fire. Well, maybe we'll find out. I hate to tell you, Doc, but your last time departed display is on the fritz. It is? So how did you find me? I found one of Edna Strickland's shoes in the DeLorean. How did one of her shoes get in the DeLorean? Einstein took it from her. He did? How strange. Einie almost never attacks people. Not without a good reason, anyway. Yeah, it is rather odd. This is who I bumped into at the soup kitchen. My grandfather. No! Don't worry, I didn't talk to him or change his future or anything. Good. I wish I could, though. This era's tannin is treating him like dirt. Don't worry. If history plays out as it's supposed to, he'll soon be out from under Kit Tannen's thumb and free to live out his life as a humble accountant with your grandma. What was her name again? Sylvia. Right. 
Sylvia. Well, we'll hopefully make sure that it happens. What's the story with this kid Tannen jerk anyway? Biff's father? By this time next year, he'll be pulling down a life sentence in San Quentin. There was even a song about it. Wait, if Biff will be born in 1938, and Kid will be in prison... As I recall, he escaped from prison in 1937 for about three hours. That's a busy three hours. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> what do you know about Edna Strickland? Edna? We never really socialized when I was younger. She was a few years older than me, and we traveled in different socioeconomic circles. Why do you ask? She thinks you're a hero for burning down that speakeasy. She's doing a story on you. A story? Oh, yes. Now I remember. Ask Edna. The etiquette column that doubled as a pro-temperance soapbox. She believed that the consumption of alcohol would inevitably lead to a complete societal breakdown. Sounds like a fun gal. You should have seen her when the hippies started showing up in the 60s. She just somehow lost her mind. That would explain a lot. Yeah, I can kind of imagine. I know this really isn't the right time or place, but I found your notebook. Oh, so that's where I left it. Why'd you bring it here? Because the bank's selling off all your stuff. They can't do that. That's what I keep trying to tell them. Well, you hold on to it for safekeeping. We'll deal with my financial situation in 1986, after we saved me from a grisly death in 1931. All right, priorities first, right? Hang in there, Doc. Not the best choice of words, Marty. <laughs> yeah, well, we're going to try to see if we can break him out. We can look at the sign up here. Hill Valley Police Station. Cripes, this place looks old, even for 1931. It's kind of odd, though, because in the movies, I seem to recall this is where the gas station, the Texaco station, was. So I wonder where they moved the police station after 1931. Well, now that we've gotten the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, let's, uh, or now well, we've got part of the solution, let's tell Emmett so that he can actually figure out what the solution is. Come on, Emmett, don't go in there, don't go in there. No! Okay, well, he'll come out here in just a minute. Meanwhile, let's just enjoy the sights. Oh, here we go. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the... Hamiltonian operator? Yeah. Great Scott! If H is a Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A! <laughs> That's it! That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! Yay! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket power drill. Where did you learn so much about science? Well, oddly enough... Nah, we were not going to tell him. Well, it's like this. You know about my rocket power drill, then there can only be one explanation. What? You're from the patent office. I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome! I'm at your service. What can I do for you? All right, we've gotten him uh, interested. Now let's tell him that we really, really need the rocket drill. I love all these options here. Can I see your rocket power drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. It doesn't really matter what you say in some of these dialogue options, like the, the previous one and this one. Marty's always going to say the same thing. Now nah, that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> that's fully operational. <gasps> Tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel! I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol! Ooh. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. Yeah. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. Part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. <laughs> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. I've got a subpoena my grandpa. Uh-oh. 
sucks. It's Kid Tannen. Uh-oh. Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No. Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. I'm inclined to agree with Emmett on that count, but you know what? I don't see any other option here, so I'm going to go back to uh, that barber shop and ask Kid if he knows anything. Maybe we can uh, get some information out of him. Wait a minute. Shark! Wow, looks like they used a real shark. <laughs> I love how they put that in there. That's a nice little precursor to Jaws and Jaws 19. What the hell matches? You, you got kiwi all over my socks! Sorry, boss. Get out of here. How about you? Huh? I'm sitting at a shoe shine booth. You walk up. Either you're here to shine my shoes, or you got a death wish. Which is it? I guess we're gonna shine his shoes. Let's see if uh, he knows anything about Arthur. I'm looking for a guy named Arthur McFly. He's my, uh, sort of a relative. Well, he's my employee. He's very busy today. Well, if he's busy right now, maybe we can find him some other time. So when do you think Arthur will be leaving the office? When I tell him he can leave the office. Hey, you missed a spot. And where is the office? Since you're Arthur's boss, you know where he is, right? He's at the, uh, office. Where's the office? I forget. Right. What about that hat? We saw Artie with that hat earlier. Isn't that Arthur McFly's hat you're holding? It was McFly's hat. Now, it's my peanut bowl. <laughs> Could I buy Arthur's hat off you? Could you keep your mind on your work, huh, shoeshine boy? Hanging on to my peanut bowl. Can I have some peanuts? Why not? I'm a magnanimous kind of guy. Go ahead, knock yourself out. Hmm. We can try to eat some peanuts, but I'm actually interested in getting that hat because if he's not going to tell us where Artie is, we might be able to use Einstein to sniff him out. Hey, kid! Yeah? What the hell is that? Hey! Chase scene! What'd you do? <laughs> Poor Emmett. I think that's the guy from the soup kitchen. Now we've really messed up this timeline. Give me that hat, you lousy crook! Emmett! Come on, Emmett, run! Oh, nice football play there. I like that. Nobody makes a monkey out of Kid Tannen. <laughs> Except Kid Tannen. <laughs> Ow! Fix me up. You learn how to move like that. Sandlot football. They used to call me the streak. Get out. Man, we're learning more and more about Doc every day here. Okay, so we got Artie's hat. So now, let's try giving it to Einstein and seeing if he'll uh, tell us where Artie is. Also, Edna's here, but we'll talk to her a little bit later. We've done quite a bit of talking lately, so I wanted to get some actual storyline progression going here. Hey, honey. Come here for a sec, boy. Hey, boy. Can you find the guy who belongs to this hat? Come on, Einstein. Where is he going? Only one way to find out. All right. <laughs> Doc ducking there. Deja vu. <laughs> this place definitely looks familiar. 
Except now instead of a uh, arcade, this used to be a billiards parlor, I guess. And apparently uh, Arthur is in the apartment complex, or the apartment area here where, uh, not the complex, but this apartment where Edna later on lives in uh, 1986. Yeah? Who is it? It's McFly! Shh, I know! Let's try talking to him. Hey, Arthur, can you come down a minute? Do I know you? Yeah, we're family. I'm your grand... uh, mother's great nephew. You mean my second cousin? Yeah! Glad to know you. But I can't leave this building till the boss says so. He's given strict orders. Sorry. Some other time. Uh-oh. Well, that didn't work out. Let's try a little bit more uh, direct approach. Let's say that we've got something. What now? Let's try saying that we'll have something that will bring down kids, Hannon. It's me again. Please come down. Why? We represent the law. You don't want to go against the law, do you? No, but I don't want to go against Kid Tannen either. And he ordered me to stay put till he gives the word. Sorry. Some other time. Well, that didn't work either. It seems like Arthur won't come down unless Kid tells him to come down. But how are we going to get Kid over here to tell Artie that? Well, we can't get Kid here, but we might be able to do the next best thing. And we'll have to do that in the next video.